Yo, what's good, my people? How the heck did you guys find me here? Today, we're currently in the office. I just wanted to let you guys know something real quick. The last video was kind of like a part one. I have a part two for this video. I know I said that there were three different lures you shouldn't leave the house without, but I only caught fish on two of those lures in the first video. I have more footage of chatterbait fishing. I just didn't have enough room to fit it all into one entire video. So this video is going to be a strictly for chatterbait fishing. Hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to get straight to the action. And I'm going to share a few of the same tips from the last video just so newcomers can come and catch up. And with that being said, man, subscribe to the channel. You come here to learn all of your best fishing practices. And we're going to catch more fish all around the world. So let's get to it. Oh yeah, he smacked it right at the bank. I was not ready, but he smacked it. Let's go. Throwing chatter baits around grass, and we're making it happen. We're looking for bigger, but let's get them back in there. Fishing flooded grass. Just want to kind of have to give them a toss. Thank you, buddy. Chatter baits work great as a search bait. Yes, you can throw them out in open water and catch bass, but bass aren't going to always just sit in open water, right? Especially if you live down south, it's always hot. So what you should mainly primarily focus on it's throwing that chatter bait next to structures, such as grass, such as rocks, such as timber, anywhere, any kind of drop offs, any kind of depth change. Look for key locations to throw that chatter bait, and you can create some vicious, violent reaction strikes. I promise you. And a lot of times, structure usually are the homes to some of the bigger bass in your lakes. Bigger bass are lethargic. They don't like to use a lot of energy. That's why they get big so fast, much faster than the other fish in the pond. They just like to sit, wait, and ambush. They're smart hunters. And trust me, you can really pull out some vicious ones. Fish. Oh, yeah. I think we found them. I think we found them. And they're fighting so freaking strong today. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I think he just threw my trailer. He just threw my trailer. Whew, come on. Slow down, buddy. Let's get you out that grass. Let's get you out that grass, buddy. Chatter baits in the grass. <laughs> Catching us beautiful Florida bass. Thank you, buddy. So we're just going to cast out. Show you the first retrieve. You can literally just slowly retrieve this thing. You can retrieve it at a slow to medium pace if you want. And sometimes I get you bites as well when the bass are super hungry. But due to the fact that it's super early, still cloudy, I'm looking for a few bass to be chasing. And if I really want to trigger a strike, instead of just reeling it super slow, I'm going to throw it back out there, show you how to trigger a strike. You got to let it sink to the bottom first, kind of count it down, how many seconds it takes. That, that tells you the water depth right there. And once you begin your retrieve, you begin it with a slow to medium retreat, and you just crank it for like a real hard real turn. You turn it super slow, and you just crank it super fast in that split second. Sometimes a split second gives a bass one last chance to react before that bait gets away. Bass are opportunists. When they see an easy meal, they're going to crush it. I'm telling you. So that's definitely another way to crank them out. You just got to kind of play around with it every three to four turn. Every three to four turns of the real handle, that's when you just kind of crank it up real fast and it gives you that great reaction strike. Yep, it's raining, it's storming, but we out here and we're getting it, getting active. Let's go. Casting right next to these trees. I have some flooded grass down there also. Prime time for a bass to be hanging out. Water's actually a bit clear. Tons of grass out there. Sheesh. Thought I had a fish. A fish. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Just straight up smack it out of nowhere. Whew. Let's go. It's cloudy. It's stormy. It's raining. But we got us a nice, nice little Florida fatty, man. Let's go. Thank you, buddy. So it's still early, it's still cloudy. That is definitely the best time to throw moving baits. One other bait you should keep on hand is definitely some sort of chatter bait, or some people call them the bladed jig. And to fish a bladed jig, all you need is a medium heavy rod, of course, steel ducket. 
medium heavy power, super sensitive tilt, and it lowers up a lot of bites so I'm not snatching the hook out of fish's mouth. And it doesn't take much, just run a six four to one gear ratio. Never wanna overdo it. Never throw anything higher than a six eight for a chatter bait. You really want to crank that bait and allow it to do what it gotta do. Don't wanna overwork, you don't wanna burn it by the bass face. 